Hello, 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 and welcome to another Touch the Zenner tutorial by Captain Panic. And this time we will have another look at fucking images up. Um, I've been playing around with UV remapping lately, uh, which you can recognize from the tutorials I released this month. Um, and this is another technique I wanted to show you, since it gives some really nice effects on, on images. And um, as always, I created different, different outputs um, for the whole package. Head over to my Patreon. And now let's get started. So, um, as always, um, we start from scratch and this time um, we are using instancing to get the diff different squares of our image. So, um, first thing I will change resolution to a square, also bring it down and then I will start to set up a render setup. So the first thing we will need is either a, a grid or a rectangle or whatever you like. I chose to go with a grid. I don't really know why I preferred it over the rectangle, but um, yeah. Then I connect it to a null and then I hold on here and then hit tab and under the comp area, I will choose the geometry. Then we bring in a camera and a light, which we will need to get the render top to work. And then I will use my default resolution on my render connected null and make the display blue so we can see what's going on and voila now we have our grid and which looks like a rectangle and now we want more of those grids so um, to do so we are going to use instancing and um, this time I will use some noise chops for the instancing. So under the chop, select a noise, connect it to a null, and then rename this instance so we don't get confused about that. And then inside of that noise, we want three different um, channels here since we have a TX transform, a TY transform, and also a TZ transform. So to do so, under the channel tab of the noise, we can just type in TX, make a space, TY, space, and TZ. And when we let go, we get our three different channels, which are randomly created and not the same which is amazing and right now we have a lot of samples going on and to change that we bring down the sample rate which is on the default at 60 to something like 15 or that depends on how many samples of the grid we want so when we go on our geometry we turn on instancing and use this instance as our defa default instance op. And then under that translate, we select tx, ty, and tz. And now you can already see we have multiple grids available. So um, amazing. Um, but right now they are not moving and we want them to move. And in order to do so, we can animate this noise chop by using the 
apps time dot seconds on our noise and there we go now they are moving around but right now they are pretty much like a swarm and I want them to be a little bit more um, I want more space between every single grid so in the noise tab I will bring down the period a little bit to maybe that point four yeah I think this is cool also I brought up the roughness to one and I brought down the harmonics to null but actually yeah no leave it at one and then uh, on the amplitude um, I changed that a little bit so we have more different um, rectangles going on. Um, but right now I feel like it's too many too many rectangles going on. So I will bring down the sample rate to something even lower. Maybe maybe bring it down to three. Yeah, I think this is cool and then make it a little bit slower by turning down the apps time that seconds by 0.1 maybe yeah this feels a lot smoother and now we want to bring in some texture which will be a UV map which we will then use as a remap for an image input a 2d image input so um, you might know the procedure um, bring in a ramp I will copy my default ramp and um, one thing I want to mention at this point this default file is not default by touch designer this is a default file I built in order to speed up my workflow um, it is not necessary to follow this tutorial but if you want this default setup which can save you a lot of time you can find that on my Patreon. Um, okay, so here's a reorder after that ramp. Then a flip, flop, bottom left. Use this as the second input of the re reorder. Use this one as the second input and zero the blue input. And now we created a UV map. Okay. But how? <laughs> I'm sorry. That that was uh, might be a little bit too loud. I will mute that in my post edits of this tutorial. <laughs> but I will probably forget it. So I'm sorry about that sound. Um, okay. So how do we bring this reorder this top texture into our three D space? So to do so, bring in a mat, and in this case we are going to use a constant mat. And then make this palm material by just dragging it onto the geometry. And then in our constant material we have this color map available. And if we take our reorder and just drag it on the color map, we get our color map on our image. So now we have multiple UV maps floating around in that space and now we could use that as a remap for the whatever image we want to bring in but first of all I want to add some things in here but um, I want to see what's going on in the background on an image so I'm bringing in the null here now and also I will bring in a image by using the movie file in um, I might use a different image maybe that butterfly is cool and then um, I will bring in a fit after that so we can bring it on the same resolution we are using here and 
since this um, butterfly is transparent and I don't want that, I will bring in a background color which doesn't work. <laughs> but okay, no, don't bring in a background color. Um, okay, then use a remap and use this one as the second input and then and there we go. Um, now you can see, um, I, I will actually change the image to something that isn't transparent to make the effect a little bit better visible. So I will use this thing. And now you can see we have multiple images floating around, which is pretty cool. Um, but I want to have this in a more glitchy way. So I decided to bring in a feedback before our remap. So bring in a comp before the null, change it to over and bring in a feedback because I want to track the movement of my UV maps. So when I use that, make this the target layer and then we get this cool kind of scan effect um, which tracks um, a trail of every image we have and yeah I I really really like this <laughs> and um, but if we want this to be a little bit more soft we could bring in a level and bring down the opacity a little bit and then also let's bring in a keyboard in so we can reset the feedback loop here. So when we have that level and we get that trail that also disappears, we have even more um, glitches going on. Um, which is also kind of cool. And also you could bring in a blur. to give the trail a more um, liquid look, uh, which is also kind of cool. Or, yeah. Um, but that basically is the fact that works kind of cool on different, different images. Um, and of course you, you can make some changes um, in our instance setup. So if you want this to be a little bit more three-dimensional, you could change that grid to a, a box or something like this. So if we use a box here, and then you can already see we get a more three-dimensional aspect to our um, thing, but right now the UV map gets kind of kind of fucked up. So maybe try rotating that um, that box and then you get a totally different result you could also animate that box or or whatever um, also you could animate in the camera which also is uh, gives you a kind of interesting effect so if I bring this back to my null and then I'm using a different position for for the for the camera so if I'm closer I'm getting closer to the UV maps and the more far I get away the smaller our things get so for example um, it's just like we get more samples visible but when we zoom in they just get bigger and it looks like we have more bigger instances and when we get far away we have more smaller instances so you could also use this this to create an interesting look yeah okay <laughs> so that was the technique i wanted to show if you want the full um edits i made in the end have a look at my patreon and if you 
enjoyed this tutorial i will be happy to um will be happy about a follow or a like or whatever i'm very thankful for every support i'm getting since i'm spending even more time with patreon now and i'm grateful for every supporter so thank you for listening um thank you for staying creative and i hope you had fun i hope you learned something stay kind and bye bye